Thank you. Thank you. So I'm just going to kind of set the scene, really, and then hand over to Catherine. So just as uh, obviously it, it says by this quite busy um, slide, um, we both work for Epilepsy Action. Um, I've been there for two and a half years and uh, I retired and returned to this, uh, obviously to this uh, role. Um, so Epilepsy Action, if you could go to the next slide, that'd be really helpful, please. Thank you. So who are Epilepsy Action? Um, first and foremost is thank you so much for this opportunity to uh, to present this project to you all. Um, Epilepsy Action, so it's a national charity as it says there. Um, we cover Northern Ireland, Wales and the UK. We don't cover Scotland, but we have a reciprocal arrangement and work very closely with them. We set off in this year to set out our strategy and it has three really clear ambitions. Um, and as uh, Kim's already alluded to, epilepsy has a really big impact on, um, on people and their lives. So our ambitions start with improving the lives of everyone with epilepsy. Um, it can have some devastating effects on people. It can affect work. It can affect their mental health um, and everyday activities. And we want to be the voice of people living with epilepsy to be able to share those experiences. Um, we want to raise public understanding of epilepsy. Um, it's, in, it's interesting to know that not everybody knows what epilepsy is or they think they know and all they think of is seizures, but it has got so many other um, elements to it. And this is one of our ambitions is to make sure that everybody knows what epilepsy is. And to be fully inclusive, Fully inclusive really does mean about having everybody on board, stigma, isolation, all of those issues that Kim picked up um, are very implicit in our work. So as a charity, um, we provide a whole range of resources. Um, and I just want to kind of give you a quick overview. We do resources both for, uh, for healthcare professionals. We do a lot of templates for care plans and we do seizure diaries. We have the drug watch, um, medicine shortage information. We do a lot of printable health information, which you can have access to. You just need to do orders. All of these can be uh, through order. Um, we advise, uh, we provide advice to professionals through a whole range of, of ways, particularly our helpline. And that is uh, available Monday to Friday and some Saturday mornings. Um, and we have a range of people who can help advise and support people. Um, and we also do a whole range of uh, online epilepsy training, which can be accessed by both healthcare professionals as well as by um, individuals. But we very much and we're very pride ourselves on the resource we do for people with epilepsy. We are what we call PIFTIC accredited, which means that we are, um, go through a whole range of accreditation and are, and are, are nationally recognised. We do information for uh, about having a family. Again, the helpline answer those experienced and uh, experienced team can answer those questions. We do a range of talk and support groups, which are online and in person. We do a befriending service. Um, we do the free online training um, and the latest news. We do a range of publications that uh, go through from um, professional epilepsy professional, uh, ET, that's Epilepsy Today. We do newsletters and we do have a, a membership for uh, um, epilepsy specialist nurses, but equally for any professional who wishes to join. Next slide. Thank you, Alison. And um, I'll, I'll just, I'm so delighted to be able to share the Maternity Epilepsy Project, which um, began in January of this year. And our ambition and aim right at the very beginning was, was very clear to, um, to improve the clinical outcomes and the lived experiences, you know, back on, you know, from what Kim was sharing, you know, with a wealth of experience, those lived experiences are, are very real. And it's so important that um, we you know together that co-production we we develop a pathway of care that includes not just pregnancy but preconception and postnatal care of well and and what we have um, 
achieved in the 11 months is we have we have co-developed a, a, a library of resources which include a northwest regional guideline um, a minimum service specification and a self-assessment um, toolkit so to enable um, providers local providers to benchmark their service around national and safe standards so um so some of some of the things kim shared already as as to where the project has originated from but it, you know i have to thank alison you know for her vision with all her leadership expertise and, and knowledge her vision you know on the back of the embrace report which Kim's already identified that women with epilepsy are 10 times more likely to die in pregnancy than uh, than women without pre without epilepsy, you know, and linking into um, the reports from SUDEP and the fact that maternity epilepsy related deaths have almost tripled in the three years. So so on the foundation from that. Um, Alison, um, joined partnership with the Northwest Regional Maternity Team to to fund and create this amazing and most um, most life changing project for for women, but equally for care providers. And you know, in in the last eleven months, we have undertaken lots of events and um, engagements with 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 women and their families, with clinicians. Um, to to enable us to co-produce um that library of, of resources so when we look at the northwest um we know that one of the biggest challenges has been around the limited national data because unfortunately epilepsy related information is not mandatory as part of the msds um, data set but we do know within the Northwest, approximately 73,000 people are living with epilepsy. And that roughly equates to about 1% um, 1 of, of the population. Um, you know, again, just some of the um, what built on the back of what Kim said, you know, there is links with people with epilepsy living in the most deprived areas and within the Northwest you know, we have some of the most deprived areas within the UK. Um, what data we do have, and we are working closely with the um, regional um, business intelligence managers to try and capture and to build um, a data library, is that, you know, within Chesham and Mersey, one of our um, local maternity and neonatal services within the Northwest, 51% of their women with epilepsy are actually living in the most deprived areas. So it just really reinforces what we know already. And then there's lots of, you know, different um, publications coming out and, and research. There is a need to do more research, but there's also um, so some of the information is quite controversial. But, you know, there's a recent um, Scandinavian study that highlighted a 50% um, increase of, of either death or illness for children of women with epilepsy. So, you know, what we don't understand, I'm sure Kim's the same here, is why, why has nothing, why has this not got a higher profile within the maternity agenda? It's, it's screaming, it's screaming that, you know, we need to do things differently. So the, the project, you know, as Alison said, include you know being inclusive is so important um, for you know with within the values of epilepsy action and that and that shared decision making you know around. But the woman, you know, Kim's quite right. The woman is the only decision maker. You know, as as a as a service provider, our role, I'm very clear, our role is to ensure that each person has all the information they need to make the right choices for them and their family. And throughout the project, we have had extensive um, partnerships and relationships built across the Northwest. And, and I think what's different to this project is we have also included, it was important to us to capture the young voices because ultimately they will be our future service users and families, but equally, um, Whilst we know that, um, you know, the, the young person pregnancy rate has reduced over the last 10 years, they, you know, they, they still choose or maybe, maybe um, unplanned preg pregnancies occur. So it's around, it's a different 
it's a different cohort of people that we we need to get the messages right we need to get those communications and and that information right within our future pathway to to create that sustainable model moving forward um but the first thing that we did was undertook a gap analysis and some things were weren't really a surprise you know in in, in previous reviews of of systems and care pathways it comes up time and time again and it's no surprise that there's huge variation and, and gaps in clinical practice and available resources. And, and, and Kim, you shared this too, you know, within in your work, and I'm sure you've seen it when, when you've been reviewing Embrace um, investigations and reports. Um, I think what we've, what we've found is the, the big elephant in the room around this is around that there's no preconception pathway. It's around looking at who will own this. Whilst lots of uh, the, the documents, the national documents, um, refer to preconception because that is the foundation of increasing um, healthier pregnancies and healthier outcomes for, for, for women and families it doesn't appear that there's any clear ownership and direction across the Northwest. Um, we know that with, you know, as part of the gap analysis, there's huge variation in language and that can be quite confusing because what we're trying to establish is a pathway that is for all care providers, you know, so, and when we're changing things like AED, ASM, you know, that can be quite confusing. Um, we noticed um, that some some centres didn't have a maternity specific guideline, and you know it, it can be quite sometimes when you're looking at um, you're looking at a care pathway, it felt like trying to find a Russian doll. Do you know, it was like we, there were so many or you know or layers of an onion trying to unpick where to get that information from. Um, Within the guidelines, we never saw anything that related to first seizures during pregnancy, you know, within local guidance. And, you know, that can happen for some women, um, you know, and is much needed within 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 the clinical guideline. Um, often um, there was, you know, Kim had spoke about comorbidities, you know, learning, you know, she's experienced more um, women with learning disabilities and, uh, and having epilepsy. But also, you know, increased links of mental health issues that women with epilepsy um, have have higher risk of, of developing. So, the, you know, there's lots of things there for us to work and to found a really robust pathway moving forward. Next was we we had several um, listening and uh, listening um, events with with women and with and with young people and you know it just re reiterates what we've heard is the same as what Kim has shared you know that women often feel very isolated and under pressure repeatedly not being listened to you know the listening events were very emotional you know and, and uh, you know it it, it, it was quite it's quite difficult to hear you know as, as a midwife and and, you know, one woman shared that she wasn't believed when she said, I've had a seizure. The staff did. How? how? I, it just is beyond my conception of how how a clinician can do that. You know, women felt that, you know, um, the NHS knew nothing. You know, and we, we've we've talked several times, you know, throughout the programme. It did feel like we don't know what we don't know. You know, not not for all, you know, there was good area of care and that was mainly centred around the amazing work that the epilepsy specialist nurses and their teams provide. And equally, as the maternal medicine networks are, 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 are being embedded within within the regions and there was, you know, there was lots of um, issues around care that they'd received and that as around lack of lack of support poor communication between maternity and epilepsy services and and the lack of knowledge from staff kept coming through um with e with each of the um listening events so there was there was lots of us there lots lots of learning for us um to embed within the pathway we had um we had some young people's voice but we felt that we wanted to get a wider understanding 
And um, out of 28 responses that we had from the survey, it was really good to see that, you know, two, two thirds, we'd like more, but two thirds had, had, had received contraceptive advice. Um, unfortunately, only seven had received information when actually wanting to plan um, a, to have a baby. And I think what what was, I think one of the key things that we've taken away from this is that whilst I think sometimes there's an assumption that the younger the younger population are quite digitalized they actually 85.7 percent wanted face-to-face -face, um face-to-face -face discussion with either a nurse a midwife or or, or, a, or a doctor um, but they did prefer in terms of when we're sharing information and resources, the majority of them did prefer the um, app based platforms. Um, and I think, what, you know, key things to take away is, is around what was most important to young people around contraception. And that was around um, information about their epilepsy, but particularly, you know, around the interaction of taking anti seizure medication. So we've, again, more learning that we were so privileged to capture at this, at, at, during the project. So we then had clinic, clinical listening events with, with midwives, with obstetricians, with neurologists, with GPs, and with, it was quite diverse, the clinical listening events. And you know, there were some similarities. Uh, a main thing was around the variance of, of joint services. It was often inequitably and uh, inequitable, and that was compared with diabetes services, you know, where often there's very robust and established teams, even within small local providers. And um, within the bigger units in the maternal medicine centers, that wasn't so much of an issue, but where, where you've got smaller local providers, uh, they didn't have um, they didn't have the same staffing to provide services, and and subsequently they became quite inequitably inequitable. Um, a theme came up um, time again about around education and lack of access, lack of knowledge, um, lack of being released. You know because you know. There, there isn't any unit that's that's working above and beyond um, for the last five years at least, you know, so it's so difficult on top of the vast amount of man training, you know, I think a midwife in in the last trust, it was nearly it was nearly three weeks um, mandatory training that they needed to complete it. It just keeps adding and adding. But we do we do need to prioritize um, epilepsy. Um, for clinicians. We then undertook a midwifery survey because we we you know we're looking at the future as we're still uh, we're still keen to improve the uh, experiences of clinicians on the front line and we wanted to capture midwives experiences in terms of their self assessment of their knowledge of epilepsy when caring for women but equally around how confident they felt and and we were really delighted to have 60 midwives that com completed across uh, the survey across the northwest and that included a range of midwives from um all all fields of the uh, pregnancy continuum antenatal interpartum and postnatal but equally we had specialist um, midwives working in a specialist midwifery setting and you know you can see the bottom point there that we did have quite diverse experience of midwives you know from four to 38 years working as working within the NHS and um, sorry just there we go and what we found um some of the numbers don't quite add up because they didn't put not every midwife put in where she was working. Um, but we found that there was no midwives working within preconception care. And when we when we asked the midwives to self-assess, we asked them to score themselves out of one to 10, one being no knowledge, to 10 having feeling that they have expert knowledge. And you can see in each of the areas of, of pregnancy there, you know, we only had very small numbers that scored six and a seven. I think it was two for seven for antenatal knowledge, um, 
you know the rest the rest were six and and there was the majority of them were were one to three you know no or very little knowledge so so that's something that we need to they're, they're the next steps for epilepsy action to think about how we can support frontline midwives and clinicians also in enabling them to to have all the information they need to deliver safe care when caring for, for women with epilepsy and um, what we found, just to summarise the project, we found that the, um, the project is so far reaching. You know, um, we have, um, we feel that, we feel confident that the relationships between midwives, obstetricians and neurologists across the North West have improved because of the extensive networking that we have undertaken. There is a real appetite within the region to, to because, because they, they've acknowledged around their, the lack of um, consistency and robust pathways because of the huge variance. Um, the project very much, very much mirrors the national maternity agenda in terms of, you know, in terms of, in terms of um, embrace, in terms of the NHS three year plan. You know, we've talked about the core 20 plus five, both for adults and children. So what we're trying to achieve is is much bigger than writing a guideline or you know doing a pathway it's much bigger and what we have learned you know the value of working with third party you know that I think I think I personally underestimated that you know and and it is the future I think for future maternity services because you know epilepsy action has got such a vast source of knowledge and and skill set and t and and members within their team that have just accelerated um the the ambition of the project and um and that's it i think any questions um thank you very much <laughs>